Hey everybody, games that infuriate me to no end, Hunt Showdown. This is the first person shooter by Crytek that was released in 2019 and has been a pretty big success for them, but it has been plagued by a number of issues over the years. Now, a lot of people complain about cheaters. I did not encounter any cheaters, at least not to my knowledge, which really isn't surprising because apparently that's a problem mainly at the very high MMR levels, so five and six star MMR. I was at three star MMR for some utterly baffling reason the entire time I was messing with this. I have no idea what goes into the MMR because I did absolutely nothing but lose every single match that I played. I'm not joking. In the six hours I played of this game, two hours of which was co-op and the rest of which was solo, I did not manage to successfully extract from a single match. Now. You may wonder why that's a problem. Well, this game is part of a genre, or a subgenre, I should say, of first-person shooters called Extraction Shooters. These are games like Escape from Tarkov, Hunt Showdown, and much more recently, Marauders, where the idea is that you go into the match and you are placed into the, the map at some random point, and you need to go in and either loot things or complete objectives, and once you've gone in there, then you're going to be up against whatever AI is in the map, which in this particular case is stuff like zombies, basically. And more importantly, you're also going to be up against other players trying to complete the same objectives that you are. Now, in games like Escape from Tarkov and Marauders, you can actually go into a match, and you can go running around and looting things, and make it to the extraction point without encountering a single other player, if you're careful and if you get lucky. That is not going to be the case with Hunt Showdown, because Hunt Showdown is all about hunting down a monster. Now, if you hunt down the monster, then you can get a bounty token, and once you've got that bounty token, you can make your way to the extraction point. If you manage to successfully extract, then you get a significant amount of the in-game currency hunt dollars, and on top of that, you also get to keep whatever gear your character was using at the time and had in their equipment slots. And your character also gains experience, which will eventually cause them to level up, and when they level up, you can give them traits, which are various bonuses, like being able to continuously fire the lever-action rifle instead of having to wait between cycles. Now, of course, the trick with an extraction shooter is that if you die during the match, then whatever you were carrying is lost. Both the equipment that you brought in, as well as whatever you were carrying when you thought you might be able to wink your way out. So that includes bounty tokens, it includes whatever equipment you picked up in the match, that sort of thing. Now, the idea the idea behind this is that it significantly increases the tension of a match and it makes things much more high stakes. You have something to lose as opposed to going into the match and if you manage to die then it's not that big of a deal, you just respawn or something. And in games like Escape from Tarkov and Marauders, it does create that extra tension, it does create that high stakes gameplay that really does make the game a lot more exciting than what you would think just by the general description. Because not only do you have something to lose, you have something to gain. If you go in there and you find some really good loot, then you want to get out with that loot so you can either make use of it or sell it so you can get better loot or whatever the case may be. Now to give you an idea of how this can be fairly exhilarating, although it's not specifically a hunt showdown, I've been playing Marauders a bit since it came out, and I went into a particular raid with just an armor vest, a helmet, a submachine gun, and a backpack, and along the way, I was creeping along and looking for loot, and I found two crates. One of them was a medical crate, and the other one was a Central Empire supply crate. And I didn't really know what was going to be in these things, because it doesn't let you open those in the match. So I was very slowly creeping along, trying to get back to my ship so I could extract and see what was in those crates. And I got ambushed along the way, and that made the firefights a bit more tense and exciting. And I finally get back to the ship. I make it back to base, and then I open those crates and find that the Empire Supply Crate had an MG42 in it, a very high-level weapon compared to what I currently am. So high-level for me, in fact, that I didn't even have access to the ammo it uses, so 
I was looking at this thing going, holy crap, that's awesome. Because remember, at any point during that match, another player could have come along and dropped me, and that would have been it. All of that loot that I was carrying would have been up for the taking, and then they would have had access to that MG42 instead, and probably been like, holy crap, that's awesome. But that's not how Hunt Showdown goes. You see, Hunt Showdown is a far more forgiving and far more arcadey experience than the likes of Escape from Tarkov and Marauders. Instead of just going down and that's it, you can be revived by your teammates if you go down. So unlike in, say, Marauders or Escape from Tarkov, where if you go into a match solo, you are at a disadvantage, but the other players you're going up against are just as squishy as you, and if they go down, that's it for them, they've lost all their loot too. In Hunt Showdown, if you go down and you're solo, then that's it, you're done. But if you go down and you're in a squad, then your squad can just revive you and you can go right back to it. This means that playing solo in Hunt Showdown puts you at such a massive disadvantage compared to even just squads of two that you would basically have to be either an idiot or a masochist or somebody like me who has absolutely no chance of playing co-op most of the time because you have a really weird work schedule and thus none of your friends are available at the same times you are to play it solo. This is where people say, well, DW, just play it with random people online. It's not that big of a deal. To which I respond, go watch my video about why I really hate the excuse, well, this game is better with friends. I will have a link in the video description box as well as the card thing that comes up on the screen now. Now, of course, the funny thing about Hunt Showdown is I did actually manage to play it in co-op, which is not only extremely rare, but I actually even managed to play it for two hours of co-op, which is especially rare. Now, granted, it's only about half of the time I played it solo, but still, I was able to play the game in co-op for quite a bit. And so, theoretically, I have had a chance to experience the best and worst Hunt Showdown has to offer, right? Well, let me put it this way, if the best it has to offer is what I experienced, then this is one of the worst first-person shooter experiences I have ever had. Because I played the game for about six hours of combined co-op and solo play, and not once have I successfully extracted from a match. Cue some people being like, Hey, hey, DW, get good, you suck at games, or whatever. And to that I say, well, guess what? In other extraction shooters, I don't have that problem. Other games that are considerably more hardcore and much less forgiving than Hunt Showdown, I don't have that problem. Because those games are consistent. Hunt Showdown is not consistent. Hunt Showdown is a fucking mess. You can be aiming directly at an enemy and fire a shot, and that shot will do absolutely nothing. You can also be aiming at an enemy and shoot at them and hit them. You can also be aiming somewhere near an enemy and shoot and somehow hit them, even if you're not actually aiming at them. This is because the hit registration in Hunt Showdown only works when it feels like it. Which is presumably after it's downed about 20 gallons of Uttinger. You see, this is one of the biggest complaints even fans of Hunt Showdown have with it. It's the hit registration and the servers. The server stability is apparently terrible if you're not in the US or European regions, and even in those regions it's a bit of a crapshoot sometimes, and the hit registration, regardless of which region you're in, is just universally awful. This has been a problem for Hunt Showdown since the beginning of Hunt Showdown, and that means that either Crytek can't fix it, or they just don't feel like fixing it. And considering that basically all Crytek does with Hunt Showdown is add more and more legendary weapon and legendary hunter skins that you can purchase, instead of balancing the game out better, or putting in substantial content updates, or I don't know, fixing problems that the game has, I'm more inclined to think that it's the latter, that Crytek just doesn't give a shit. I mean, hell, it would be extremely easy for them to address one problem that a lot of people have had with the game over the years, and I have with it as well, which is the aiming point being very low on the screen as opposed to being centered, like, I don't know, damn near every other first-person shooter ever. And I know you can tell in the footage that it is constantly throwing me off the entire time I'm playing, because you'll see that I am keeping my center point of the screen basically at the horizon line where I would normally be aiming aiming in any other first-person shooter, but because this is Hunt Showdown, because it has a lowered point of aim, if I want to actually hit anything, I have to constantly readjust my aim so it is going higher than I feel like it should. But DW, the lower point of aim is more immersive and it lets you have better peripheral vision so you can see things better. 
guess what? If I needed to see things that were above me, I would look up. And frankly, it's a hell of a lot more distracting than I am constantly having to fight my muscle memory. I'm pretty sure the only reason people actually defend this shit is because it was in Halo 2, and because people are nostalgic for Halo, they don't want to admit that it's frankly just a terrible way of handling the aiming point on the screen, so they just defend it and act like it's more immersive or some bullshit like that. And the sad part is it would be stupidly easy for them to fix this. All they would have to do is put an option in the menu that says, point of aim or something along those lines, centered or lowered. That way, the tiny minority of people who actually prefer the lowered point of aim can play it with the lowered point of aim, and everybody else can play it with centered point of aim. It wouldn't be remotely difficult for them to implement at all, but they just choose not to do it. Oh, and uh, speaking of Halo, guess what? There's an option in the Master Chief Collection that lets you switch between lowered point of aim or centered point of aim, and it does actually play better with a centered point of aim, which is probably why Halo Infinite opted for that by default. Gee, it's almost like they realized that most other first-person shooters put the aiming point at the center of the screen for a reason. Couldn't possibly be that that's where the eyes are drawn naturally, could it? Anyway, as much as I am complaining about it, or bitching, as I'm sure the Hunt Showdown players are going to be throwing in the comments, I am still able to compensate for it. It's not like I can't aim because my point of aim has been shifted down on the screen. It's just that I'm constantly having to readjust my aim and constantly having to fight my muscle memory because my muscle memory is saying, oh, go right to the center of the screen. And because I have to override that with my mind, there is a delay in there that there wouldn't be if I was relying entirely on muscle memory memory like I do with other first-person shooters, which in turn means that my performance is automatically going to be lower in this than anything else that I play. That wouldn't be as much of a problem if the hit registration was actually consistent and didn't just work when it felt like it, thus resulting in feeling like my guns are just loaded with blanks all the time. Because that's the really obnoxious thing about Hunt Showdown. When I go into other first-person shooters, even if I don't do well in them, I never feel like the game is actively trying to make me miserable, but that's exactly how it feels when playing Hunt. It feels like the game is going out of its way to make sure that I don't have have a chance. And I've never really had that problem with any other first-person shooter. I really can't think of any other game that I've played where it didn't feel like I at least had a chance. Because you have to understand, not only did I play this game for six hours, two of which was co-op and four of which was solo, but during those six hours, I didn't have a single successful extraction the entire time I was playing it. And eventually, it basically made me start feeling nihilistic towards the game, like there was absolutely no point in even attempting anything, because I would just get sniped out of nowhere, or an enemy who was just sitting there camping that I didn't know about because you can't hear people if they're not moving, would just shoot me from behind with a shotgun, or the game would screw me over with the hit registration bullshit, or that split second that it takes my mind to overwrite my muscle memory would be just enough for an enemy to get a shot off when I would be trying to re-aim at them and it would end up picking me off, of course. And all of that compounded failure after failure eventually got me to the point where I was watching my hunt dollars starting to go down further and further. I was seeing that there was eventually going to be a point when I would basically run out of hunt dollars and thus not be able to buy gear or buy weapons or recruit hunters, and thus I would be stuck using only the free hunters that you get in the rotation, and they usually have terrible gear, and of course they're all level 1 with maybe one trait at absolute best, so obviously they're not very good and they would put me at further disadvantage, which would further dash my chances of victory. It just became this self-fulfilling prophecy. I would go into a match and I would be like, okay, let's see how long I go before I get sniped or shotgunned out of nowhere, or the monster kills me because I'm going in solo and I have crap weapons, or whatever the case may be, and sure enough, I would go for five or ten minutes running around getting clues, and eventually I would get up to where the monster is, and either another player would shoot me, or in rarer cases, the monster would get me, because usually by the time I would get to where the monster was, other players had already taken it out, because I'm going in solo, up against squads, so I'm at a massive disadvantage no matter what I do. But I started out playing the game co-op, and we were just constantly getting stomped on in that, so it's not like we were doing any better in co-op. 
co-op, and it seemed like no matter how slow I took it, no matter how carefully I played, no matter how sneaky I was, no matter what gear I was using, no matter what traits my character had, it didn't matter. It was like the game was specifically conspiring against me to make it so I didn't have even the slightest hint of a chance at victory the entire time I was playing. And I legitimately can't think of a single other game out of the hundreds of other games that I've played, many of which were some absolutely terrible games that have ever made it feel like I just didn't have a chance. And yet Hunt Showdown made it feel like I didn't have a chance. Would I eventually get a victory? I don't know, maybe. But after six hours of not getting a victory, it made it feel like I'm just never going to get one anyway, so why should I even bother playing? I mean, the entire gameplay loop is centered around leveling up your hunters, so eventually they hit level 25 and you can retire them. And if your hunters are going to die on the very first mission they're in, then why even bother with that? And in the case of the hunter I started with that had a bunch of traits and pretty decent gear from the start, why would I go into any match knowing that not only could I lose all of that stuff, but I probably would lose all of that stuff? If this were, say, Marauders or Escape from Tarkov, I would do that because, you know what, I actually have a pretty good chance of finding good stuff while I'm in the match and making it out of there as long as I'm careful and take my time and play it sneaky. Games like Escape from Tarkov and Marauders feel like you are taking calculated risks. Hunt Showdown, on the other hand, feels like you're throwing a bunch of money into a rigged slot machine, one that will just never actually pay out. And you know what the most infuriating part about all this is? On paper, Hunt Showdown is right up my alley. It is set in the late 1800s in the bayous of Louisiana. You've got really cool monster designs, you've got really cool character designs, you've got pretty good sound design, although the guns could certainly sound a bit punchier. And speaking of the guns, they're exactly the kinds of guns that I find really interesting, that mid to late 1800s era of firearms development where things were advancing at a really rapid pace and you have this mixture of revolvers and lever actions and breech loaders and even some bolt action rifles and semi-automatic handguns, a lot of which you just don't see depicted in pretty much any other game. And that core extraction shooter gameplay loop is fine in and of itself. I mean, I play Marauders and I enjoy Marauders, and I haven't even played Marauders in co-op. That's entirely been solo play, and I've actually done really well at that and only died in that a couple of times. But I felt like I had a chance in Marauders, and when I died in Marauders, it was usually because I screwed something up or the enemy just outnumbered me and they all rushed me at once or something like that. I would fail for reasons that I could easily identify and perhaps develop a plan against in the future. I mean, there's only so much you can do against getting rushed by an entire team of enemies. But stuff like running out of ammo in the middle of a firefight, well, I could try carrying in a bit more ammo or maybe a backup weapon or something like that. Or if it's a matter of, well, I pushed a bit too aggressively there, well, I'll just need to play a bit more carefully or be a bit sneakier or things like that. I would be able to identify what the problem was and come up with a way that I might be able to fix that problem in the future. In Hunt Showdown, on the other hand, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Again, no matter how I played it, no matter what I was using, no matter how carefully I played, no matter how sneaky I was, I would always fail. So it was like the game was just saying, nah, fuck you, you are not allowed to have fun. And I really can't think of any other multiplayer game that has ever done that to me, so I don't know what to make of it. I know the Hunt Showdown fans will probably be saying things like, uh, he's just mad because he's bad at the game, but how the fuck are you supposed to get better at something that seems like it's based entirely on chance? Again, this is a game where you can have perfect aim and it just doesn't matter. And since it seems like Crytek is never going to actually address the issues the game has, I really don't see it getting any better than this. I don't see them ever putting in the centered aiming point that it really should have, even if it's just an option. I don't see them ever fixing the hit registration problems with the server stability problems. All I see them doing is throwing more and more skins in there because they just want to make as much money on the game as possible. I mean, hell, if this had just released and it was, say, in a beta or alpha stage, then I would be a lot more lenient on it, but it's been out for over two years now. They should have fixed pretty much all of the issues this game has years ago at this point, and they just haven't. And honestly, I can't say I'm surprised by this. It's Crytek. They haven't made a good game since 2004. They need to stop focusing so much on the tech behind their games, the CryEngine, and start focusing more on actually making their games fun to play. Thanks for watching.